and it wouldn't be a Final Four without Frank Fallon, so let's join him. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Kingdome in Seattle, Washington, for today's national championship semifinal game between the Seton Hall Pirates and the Duke Blue Devils. And now, let's meet the starting lineup. For Seton Hall, at forward is 6'7", junior from Melbourne, Australia, number 10, Andrew Gage. For Duke, at forward is 6'5", junior from Fayetteville, North Carolina, number 21, Robert Brickey. For Seton Hall, at forward, a 6'8 senior from New York, New York, number 24, Daryl Walker. For Duke, at forward, a 6'10 senior from Bowie, Maryland, number 35, Danny Ferry. For Seton Hall, at center, a 6'8 senior from Canovanus, Puerto Rico, number 25, Ramon Ramos. For Duke, at center, a 6'10 freshman from Angola, New York, number 32, Christian Lechner. For Seton Hall, at guard, a 6'1 senior from Brooklyn, New York, number 15, Gerald Green. For Duke, at guard, a 6'4 junior from University Park, Illinois, number 3, Phil Henderson. For Seton Hall, at guard, a 6'3 senior from the Bronx, New York, number 23, John Morton. And for Duke, at guard, a 6'3 senior from Mercer Island, Washington, number 14, Quinn Snyder. Introducing the head coaches for Seton Hall in his seventh season, T.J. Carlesimo. For Duke in this ninth season, Mike Krzyzewski. They are good friends from bygone days at Wagner and Army. Back with game one in just a moment. You can see what they did against Indiana and UNLV. Those are the worst defeats that either of those basketball powerhouses have ever suffered in the tournament. As for Duke, they came out of the other half of the country, the East. And they beat back Minnesota and Georgetown at the Meadowlands last week. So, Andrew Gaze, we'd like to welcome all you viewers down under for the first time. We're being viewed live on, I believe, it's Network 7 down in Melbourne and Sydney. And uh, certainly all of you folks down there are justifiably proud of Andrew Gaze, who has had a spectacular tournament in jumping center. Who's the man who was the mainstay of the Puerto Rican national team, Ramon Ramos. The other three fellas, as you might expect, are out of the New York area. Brooklyn, the Bronx, and New York City. And Green will pick up Snyder. Leitner drops in for Ferry off his hand, picked up by Seton Hall. The toughest 10 feet in college basketball may be trying to score against the Seton Hall defense. Ramon Ramos on the turnaround. Ferry off the glass gets it into Snyder quick pass to Leitner who couldn't get the handle now let's turn back the clock to a year ago it was 14 nothing Kansas in the first six minutes of that game before Duke could even get on the board this is off of Gaze's hand and Brent, it we, goes over we talked about these in this game jitterbug and it looks like both clubs are a little jittery starting early on but Trying to go down inside to Danny Ferry and figure he's got a little bit too much size on Walker. We'll see. Half-court game that you might expect from these two all game long. Very tough defensively. Snyder looking for the entry pass, and again it goes over. Walker doing a great job man-to-man -man defensing on Danny Ferry. He's fronting him. They're trying to lob over the top. Walker's forearm strong enough to hold Ferry out. So Duke turns it over three times in the early moments. Here is Morton, short on the iron. Henderson, number three, yanking it away for the Blue Devils. Brickey can explode, comes to the paint and draws free and gets it back. And it will not fall. This is shades of Kansas City for the Blue Devils. Nothing will drop, just as it did not against the Jayhawks. Now it's Gaze, a three-point whiz, and he rims out. Leitner with the ball. Gaze is going to have some trouble with Bricky in regard to quickness. Bricky went by him rather easily that last time down the floor. Crew Ferry. Back to Snyder. They work it with Bricky. And if there's any weakness, it's from the perimeter. And Henderson was fouled by Morton as he rose for that shot. Let me give you the official. 
Big John Cruz, you might expect for this national semifinal. Larry Limbo of Farmingdale, New York. Don Rutledge of Windermere, Florida. And Ed Hightower of Alton, Illinois. Tim Higgins is across the way. Ramsey, New Jersey. He's the alternate. You're looking at T.J. Carlissimo, the first coach in the final four games to wear a beard. <laughs> I shouldn't say wear. Folks, that's real. Well, they came out here to shoot early on, and there were some fans, so have to note, there are some balls that did go through the net. <laughs> we haven't seen one yet, but believe me, in the warm-ups, there were a few that went through. I saw Glenn Rice hit some of practice yesterday from Michigan. <laughs> and finally, on the scoreboard, Duke picks up full court, man-to-man. -man. You know how Ferry likes to help double team. So we went almost two minutes without a point. Walker on the drive, and it's an offensive foul. Yeah, both teams are executing their offenses very well, but when you don't get the ball to go in the hole, it makes it look like you're not doing much on that end of the floor. Now we see Seton Hall picking up full court, man to man. Leitner back to help out. Ferry, an excellent ball handling big man. Henderson up to Snyder, who's over here on the wing, with a bricky on top. Ferry off the dribble. Danny Ferry on a great leaner. Very difficult to defend that shot because he puts that barrel chest right into you. Seton Hall last played Duke in 1970. They are 0-3. Lifetime Henderson with a great block. Trying to get a breakaway. Bricky. And he is ooh, fouled. And they ooh. both go down hard. Green and Bricky are down. And it was an awkward fall. Bricky's legs were tied into Green. And he couldn't get his legs loose. So therefore, all the way to this fall goes on to his backside. Now watch, he could not free up his legs and everything hit down on his backside. Only athletes that are in great physical condition can withstand a fall like this. Well, it's charged to number 15, mm -hmm. Carol Green. Looks like he's going to be all right. Third. Speaking Four of falls, Ramon Ramos in the first couple of rounds down in Tucson for Seton Hall took two nasty falls and uh, it's believed by P.J. and some of his assistants that he was not in real good physical condition last week in Denver. And that was a good hustle play uh, by Green. Nice piece of sportsmanship as he slaps Ricky on the hand. And also, I think, a nice piece of sportsmanship by Mike Suszewski. He could have put in another free throw shooter. In this case, Ricky stays in the game, the weakest free throw shooter on the club. national semifinal you can lose one of these games in the early going if you're not careful certainly kansas put away duke and now it is seton hall looking to get on the board and they lose it again on a turnover leitner again with those great hands great defense very open from three it will not fall but an offensive rebound henderson a putback misses and walker left all alone not a very sharp, uh, smart shot by henderson there he had no one under when you get an offensive rebound, unless it's a good, easy put back, you're better off bringing it back out. Gaze does a lot of those little things that help you win. Great drive trying to get the layup that time, and he drew the blocking foul from Leitner, his first. You know, Brent, some fellas, and you see this a lot with international players, might not have that same type of quickness we see here in the country. You see Smith coming in for Bricky, and Bricky hurting a, a great deal out there. Looks like he got hit in the thigh this time. Not the same injury as he just fell, but Gaze is uh, just one of those fellows that knows how to score. He's got the great outside shot. He can take it inside and get it off. Very seldom gets his shot blocked. Boy, they are uh, looking at Bricky with the trainer and a doctor and discussing it over there he may have tried it after that nasty fall and be more seriously shaken up than we were led to believe when he stayed in the game i think grant that he got hit on this on this particular play by gaze's knee in the in the thigh because they're looking at his right thigh and i, I really don't believe it's the same uh, injury you can see where that ice pack right. is on the thigh gaze good free throw shooter Solid fundamentally. 
So Gaze puts Seton Hall on the board at the 1649 mark. Five to two, Duke leads it. With Bricky out of there, it helps Seton Hall's matchup. Smith not as quick as Bricky, so Gaze has a better matchup. And the foul going against Seton Hall. And for Morton, that is his second one. This is the injury, Billy, that uh, you spoke about. See if he doesn't hit him knee on thigh on this play. Never did see it. Never did see it. He is in uh, some obvious pain over there. He had buried his head in the towel on the bench when he first sat down. So we'll get a check on Bricky's condition. Meanwhile, Smith is off of Krzyzewski's bench. He'll wear number 33. He crossed the Snyder. Played high school ball right here in the Seattle area. It's Mercer Island is a two-time Washington State Player of the Year. They punched the ferry off a great pass and a foul on Gaze from behind Leighton. Now, we talked about Tristan Leitner at the top of the show. An outstanding freshman player, destined to be a great one at Duke University. Played Alonzo Mourning right to a standstill. There's a good bounce pass into Danny Ferry. We talked about his great overall ability there, seeing on the inside with the pass. But one of the things that Leitner does, as well as any big man you'll see, is catch the ball in traffic. Really, that is five early fouls by Seton Hall and only one by Duke. So that first point of yours jitters here today may be affecting the Seton Hall team. Leitner the foul line this year over 100 times, shooting right under 74%, might follow through. Duke leads it by four, and they exert pressure on the ball. Snyder up on Green, who keeps on coming, and he is fouled by Danny Ferry. Ferry's first. Now, Brent, we've seen Ferry employ this same defensive tactic in other ball games, and that's where he helps out Snyder on that press. Walker is going to have to get down court, take Ferry out of position there, so he can't double team. So far, it's been an ugly game from a shooting standpoint and a blocking foul against Duke. That's Snyder's first. From the field, these two teams are a combined one for ten. Seton Hall still looking for his first field goal in four attempts. Cooper in the ball game, maybe to get one of those fellows off the bench, give Seton Hall the, Seton Hall the offensive lift. There's their first field goal. Green, left corner. Ramos with a hand on it. Leitner got it back. Leitner at the end line stays with it. And he was fouled. They're calling this game very, very tight on the early on. T.J. up off that bench wanting to talk about it. Again, those great hands by Leitner down inside with traffic. Well, we know we'll have a new champion. All four teams here this afternoon searching for their first NCAA championship. Duke is been here now three times in the last four years for Leitner who's at the line this is his first and Brent by a wide margin Duke University has been to the final four without winning the championship more than any other team in college basketball history look behind us and I saw Guy Lewis who had three trips and never was able to come away but Duke as a team has had three different coaches that have been here but never won the big one. Lewis was the coach of Houston. Henderson wants Leitner inside. Good interior defense by Seton Hall. They're making it very tough. Ramos drawing to Perry in this set defensively and Henderson on the drive traveled. That's the fourth turnover by the Blue Devils. Henderson has been a key in this drive to get to the Final Four for Duke University with his big scoring. Taking that burden off of Danny Ferry. Looks like a game in which those little things are going to decide it. There's Cooper who checked in. That bench which did a spectacular job in Denver. Got away from Cooper. Henderson going forward and the foul is going to be against Michael Cooper. One of the things Seton Hall has got to get back to, and that is getting Ramos down inside low so that he can use that power with those good pump fakes. So far in this game, he has not touched it down in the low post. Ala Abdel-Nabi checks in for Duke, and Leitner sits down. 
So they will go with a little more experience, giving Leitner his first break at the 15-20 mark. Leitner may have surprised Georgetown last Sunday, but after reviewing the tapes, there will be no surprise for Seton Hall. They know how much talent he possesses. Well, he worked his way into the starting lineup early for a team that was projected to be number one in the nation. One of the highest uh, recruited big men in the country last year and in a year. And talking to Digger Phelps yesterday, he thinks he's the greatest group of freshman players ever in college basketball history, particularly the big men, and Leitner's one of them. Fifteen twenty to go, first half. Nine four, Duke leading Seton Hall in our first Final Four game here today. Illinois and Michigan in number two. It's Ramos trying to take Abdelnabi down in tight. Blocking foul goes against Abdelnabi. That's the fourth team foul. So they still have a couple to give before Seton Hall will be shooting one and one. And Kubak will check in off the Duke bench. Number 22, Greg Kubak. Greg Kubak, replacing Bill Henderson. Brent, so far, Green has appeared to me to have a quicker step than anybody that Duke's been trying to guard him with, and therefore he's been able to get some advantages for his club. <laughs> Once they get established position, the officials want them just to hold their ground in there. Loosen up that tango line a little bit there, fellas. This is Green, who Billy was just telling you about with that quick first step. It's a very important coaching move by P.J. to let him run the team and a push against Snyder, and it continues to be whistled very tightly here. That's the 15 foul. Two on Snyder, who fouled out with five minutes to go against the Hoyas last Sunday. And Danny Ferry spent some time in the backcourt as a result. And they need their team leader here today. 9-4, they lead here about his condition. Green gets in, and it is blocked by Abdel Nabi. Good penetration. Good penetration, though, by Green that time. Good weak side help by Abdelnabi, one thing that Duke does very well. Ferry tried to force the pass. I mean, it is tough on the inside against this Seton Hall team. Ramos will hold his ground down in there. That was a sensational mental play by Ramos as he anticipated the pass. Now Walker comes up, misfires. Kubek rebounds. No offensive rebounds for Seton Hall. The reason for that is that Ramos is playing out on the perimeter a lot. Now it is Ferry, and that time he gets it to fall. So the Blue Devils are two for nine, and Seton Hall one for six. Wide open is Walker. And Abdel Nabi, trying to hold his ground, committed the sixth team foul for the Blue Devils. Now, James Brown, what's the situation with Bricky? All right, Brent, I followed uh, Robert Bricky to the locker room, and the problem with him is that he's got a deep bruise on that right thigh. Every time he tries to push off, Brent, he's experiencing some pain. They've applied ice to it. He's in the locker room. They're going to leave the decision up to him. Nonverbal communication between him and the trainer. Bricky is saying, I can't go right now. Let's go back to Brent. And Christian Leitner can go, so he has returned. And... Uh, Billy, I think we're going to have to go back to that nasty collision down here underneath the basket as the start of Bricky's problems. And uh, Anthony Avent now, a young man whom you really like on this Seton Hall team. I like him. Checked in. I like him. He played extremely well. As a matter of fact, one of the reasons for those subs that have come off the bench to do so well for P.J. in the regional finals, Avent extremely strong with he and Cooper and Walker down there. They won't give up anything. They could use some rebounding help from Avent. Duke out rebounding Seton Hall by that margin here in the early going. Walker trying to deny Ferry the ball. Ferry taller than Walker. Off Henderson and Ferry was the right man in the right spot, wasn't he? He's looking to dump down inside, still is. Henderson. Great defense by both clubs. They're just taking away all the normal passing lanes and shots that you get. Henderson. Short. So at the Kingdom in Seattle, it is game one of our national semifinal here this afternoon, and this one is a struggle. Neither team shooting well. With Billy Packer, I'm Brent Musburger. It's 11-6, Duke over Seton Hall. Illinois and Michigan to play the second one. Set play, trying to get a solid screen for Gaze to get off his jumper. Avent missing. Pulled away by Leitner. No 
though Duke's had the break a couple of times. Good pass inside, tough hand. Another turnover. And he turned it over on the dribble. You know, Grant, sometimes statistics in sports lie. But in this particular case, the fact that both of these teams have defensively shut other people down in this tournament is something we're seeing today. The defense is controlling the offense. There has not been an easy shot on either end of the floor. A very skill level may be the thing that could be the difference. Draw a bead that time, Billy, giving him six points. Without Ramos, no down inside game. Something Seton Hall really needs to get off the snide here. Here's Green. Leitner wrestling it away. Kubek on the drive for Duke. Smart play, no place to go. You get a, get, you get a sense Ferry's ready to explode offensively. Great block! Amen, coming up on it. Weak side help again, just like Abdelnabi's block came all the way across the lane. Time remaining, first half. And they have turned it over for the sixth time. Let's take a look at this block. Right. They went running over from the weak side, able to get up and deflect it away. There was a good fronting defense on Ferry, so the lob was available, but then it was weak side help coming over from Gaze and then Avan all the way across the lane. And... France Volsi, number 30. We just got a glimpse of him. He checks in for P.J. Carlissimo, trying to find the combination. Henderson gets it to fall, and Duke pulling away in the early going. It is 15 to 6, 11.50. Looking for Gaze for a three-point shot coming up. Gaze off the dribble, still won't fall, and Leitner away with it. Snyder quickly with a lead pass up here. Davis back to Ferry off a beautiful fake. Well, Brent, what's so tough in guarding Danny Ferry at six foot ten? PJ's got to be thinking timeout here shortly. He's going to take one now. Is the fact that Ferry can shoot the perimeter shot or go for the short range? It's an 11-2 run for Duke over the last four and a half minutes. Krzyzewski's team leading 17 to 6. Bolsey underneath was the easiest bucket Seton Hall has so far. Seton Hall only 2 for 11 from the field. Duke 5 for 13. Good inside screening by Leitner and Ferry trying to get something going down low. Ramos with a hand on the ball knocking it out of bounds. Ramos doesn't have the height of an NBA prospect, but I'll tell you, what great bulk and the way he uses it. 255 pounds. He's an accounting major at Seton Hall. Very intelligent young man, a delight to talk to. Here is Ferry coming up with a jump shot over the top, using the glass, and he has now scored 10 points here in the first half. What you'd expect of the All-American. Ramos with good position. They're just not getting the ball down in low to Ramos, and they've got to get him in the offensive action. Here is Morton looking for a seam, anything to get it on the inside. Ramos hustling his way in, and they have turned it over on a three-second violation. Returns to the lineup, replacing Brian Davis. Smith returning, and Brian Davis sits down for the Blue Devils. But the key problem right now for P.J. Carlismo is to establish that inside attack with Ramos. He's coming off a game against uh, UNLV where he did not play well and they've got to get him in the offense early on before too many minutes go by. Dropping it in on the inside and there was a holding call going against Seton Hall and that is the first on Bolton. 
You can see what the strategy defensively is by P.J. Carl Ismo. Front Don, Danny Ferry down and low and get weak side help. That time they got caught. Sully, we get word from the Duke bench that Bricky did suffer the injury going in underneath the basket in that collision when he was off balance and fell. However, when he came down here, he was hit and it aggravated. I got you. Well, he's wincing over there. I watched him when he came out. I mean, it doesn't look like he's uh, ready to go back in, do any high flying. Perry off to a solid start. It's a 21-8 lead. Ramos drops it into Volsi, and Leitner was there defensively. Gage can't come away with anything. The battle continues on the oh, good hand. And here comes Snyder in the middle. Giving it back to Henderson. And a follow by the Blue Devils. And Brett, what made that play was Christian Leitner went to the floor at 6'10", and with those incredible soft hands of his, was able to get it out of the pack. Sensational play. Both teams started slowly, but the Blue Devils found their game quicker. Now it's Gaze, and he continues to struggle. Smith hands to Leitner. Gaze will normally hit that shot. Duke switched on that play, let him wide open from three. He a double low now by Duke University. Barry wanted that ball. He had Bolsey right on his hip. Leitner steps out, almost there with him. Cross to Smith with good outside range for a big man. He buries the three. Percentage-wise, the best three-point shooter on the team, a guy who never even took three-point shots before this year. P.J. Carlissimo will use another timeout. He's down 26 days. Everything has gone Duke's way except the injury suffered by Bricky. Seton Hall just can't buy a hoop. Two of 14, trailing 26 to 8. Time remaining here in the first half. And Ferry off to a solid start here. They punch it in low to Ramos, and he continues to miss. Comes back with an offensive rebound. Score it, and we're going to put Ramos on the free throw line. Brent, the key to their game, getting Ramos down in low. He's got that big, strong body. He comes up very well, even on missed shots, as he did there because of his good hands. See the play down inside. He misses the first, but watch how well he bounces to get that second one. Powerful hands inside, goes right back up, puts it in, has a chance for three-point play here. We had a picture of Leitner returning because that was the third foul picked up by Abdelnabi. So Abdelnabi seated on Coach K's bench right now. Ramos nails the three-pointer down, and it's a good press. Nobody open. The press there, and they force the turnover. Walker brings his jump shot down. They're not guarding the man throwing the ball in bounds, and that's why there was an extra defender. The lead is 13. Five quick points by the Hall. Looking for Leitner in deep, knocked away and out of bounds. Here's the press. Nobody guarding Danny Ferry who's throwing the ball in bounds. So there you have a safety man who was Walker. Normally would be Ferry's man. Obviously open there to play a little center field, make the interception. Duke leads it, but it has not been easy on the inside here so far. And that time, they were a little too tough defensively. And for Walker, his second personal foul. Gaze playing with one. Ramos well, with one. Morton picked up two quickly. Green with one. Volsi and Cooper, one apiece. DJ Carlissimo having some difficulty here with fouls, and that could mount up to big trouble in the second half. Now, fortunately for P.J., he is very deep at that position in terms of size. Same way in the case of Mike Kuczewski on the other end. Abdul Nabi sitting down with three, but he's got some depth there. P.J. is one of uh, ten children, Billy. And I said, how many brothers and sisters are there, P.J.? He said, hey, Brian, it's six and counting. I'm not sure how many are going to be in the stand. Green bringing it down on the inside against the taller Blue Devils. But Walker, a great offensive rebounder, could not put it away. In 
Anderson across midcourt against that Pirate pressure. It's 27 to 13. Boy, Duke really looking to pound that thing down inside with these overplays in the low post. Lakeville send it back to Snyder. Snyder tries to set up his taller teammate. They force another turnover. Here comes Green. Gaze is on his right. He'll pull up with a jump shot. And now Seton Hall starting to loosen up. What Danny Ferry is going to realize is that the weak side defense is going to eliminate that pass he's trying to throw, but he will be able to throw outside for a jumper. No, that could be Morton's third personal foul, and it is. That is a big one. Brent, hard to believe. Morton against UNLV, and of course, the outstanding score only had John six Morton. points. Yes, sir. In the case of Ramos, he did not score against UNLV. And if you had said that before the Western Regional 31. Final, you'd say, no way Seton Hall wins the game. But in this particular game, they're not getting production out of Morton or Ramos again. Cooper in there. Billy, if we think back to last Sunday when Georgetown scrambled back in in that short period, it was that helter-skelter defense, that full-court pressure with Snyder now sitting down also and Morton out because of three fouls. But you remember how the helter-skelter got the Hoyas back? The Blue Devils had some difficulty with it. So if Seton Hall is to get back in this one before the intermission, they've got seven minutes. It's 28 to 15. They will need some turnovers. Well, the way you get them is you got to score in the offensive end so you can set up your press. That's been their problem so far. They Cooper wasn't score. even looking, but Gaze comes over and gets the errant pass. Good pass. And it's Walker coming up on Leitner, who was there, and the foul is against Leitner, his second. Looked like a pretty good defensive play by Leitner. Had his hands straight up in the air. Mike Dujeski complaining about it a little bit as well. That defender does have that, that position he can establish. Well, at the conclusion of this Final Four game, we'll select the Chevrolet player of the game in a conjunction with the award. Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to both Seton Hall and Duke. Brent Katsikas in the game now. P.J. looking to see before this half ends if he can find somebody can drill one from the perimeter. Number 52 right there. Seton Hall, an excellent free throw shooting team, a little over 75%. Now he's going to give up something on the defensive end, though, with Katsikas. And they are perfect today, 7 of 7 against the Blue Devils. Oh, Danny Ferry almost turned it over, looking to pass to Smith, who turned his head. Again, the double low stack by Duke. Ramos half fronting Leitner on the inside. They couldn't punch it in. Ferry who moves his game all around the perimeter, takes it down on the blocks, comes up with a jump shot. Oh, yeah. Ferry, he scored 17 points here in the first half. Duke leading at 31 to 17. So just when it appeared like the Hall might pull back into it, Duke extends its lead, and Gaze continues to miss outside. He is now 0 for 5 from the game, for the game. And Leitner again with another strong rebound. They turn it over on a sloppy pass. But what really happened there, too, is that Walker was playing such great defense on Ferry. Ferry couldn't get in position to make the catch. Or season all, number 32. Walker is defense. slim from the waist down, but he's got a good upper body, and he must have a lot more strength, and he must be very wiry there because he moved Danny Ferry on that play. Avent replaced Ramos. Nobody's handled Green yet with his speed. Here's Leitner. Chance for a three-pointer. Young man who plays with a great deal of enthusiasm and emotion. This great play here now. Avant gets caught up too high. Leitner gives the perfect 
target by holding that hand up high above his head. The pass right on the money. Very difficult to stop. Well, you say is Leitner for real as one of our tips before the game? <laughs> We're going to put an exclamation point on that one. <laughs> Alonzo Morning would say he's yeah, for real. Alonzo's a fan. Quinn Snyder back in there now, but not on green. He's got a better assignment with Gaze, not quite as quick. Walker gets Ferry in the air. And he has scored eight. Well, they're going to need some points from Andrew Gaze. Still looking to get here in the scoring column for Seton Hall in the first half. Kubek trying to get around Gaze. Now pulls up the jump shot. Knocked away from Kinsikis. Henderson up over the back with his first personal foul. And they're in the one and one. So Seton Hall will come down here and shoot a couple of free throws against Krzyzewski. Well, coming up next, it'll be that neighborhood war, Michigan against Illinois. Two teams from the Big Ten. Brent, you know, we talked about Mike Krzyzewski being to the Final Four three times. Here's that Michigan. Here's your, here's your band. My that, guys have arrived. They're going to send you a Christmas <laughs> present, Brent. You're the guy that got them here. <laughs> way off the iron. But we talked about Mike Krzyzewski before bringing a team to the Final Four. You know, Bill Foster brought Duke to the Final Four and then Vic Bubis on three occasions with great clubs came to the Final Four. Henderson loses it and gets it back. Henderson's got gaze on him. I believe he can beat him one-on-one. -on -one. Kubek lost the handle. Green's got it. And quickly Henderson is there and he lets Green go for his fourth hoop of the first half. Seems that every time they get in trouble, it gets in Ferry's hand. Such a great passer for a big man. Always finds the open teammate. Snyder glides in, missing, and there was Ferry on the other side of the glass, but it is Snyder who gets it back. Throws That's it up. Wow, on that play. Snyder on the floor. It's Seton Hall's ball. So he paid a price for going in there. He sure did. He threw that up and got fouled and laid on the floor. No call. Placing Smith returning. Number 33, John Smith. Placing Greg Kubik. And Ramos back on the floor for Carlissimo. Big basket right here for Seton Hall, Brent. Get that thing down inside 10 points. Be a good comeback on their part. Walker staying with it, and he is fouled. And now that's Leitner's third personal foul. Abdel Nabi with third. So there are some of those numbers starting to mount up against Duke, which would indicate that this one is a long way from over. When the big fellas down on the inside get into foul trouble, 34-23 is not much of a lead. Brent, you know something else that's very apparent? With Bricky out of the lineup, Duke does not have another finisher on the offensive end to score. And it doesn't look like we're going to be seeing him, uh, certainly not in the rest of this half. He still has that ice pack on. Duke has not been able to get that other guy to help Danny Ferry score any points. When you've got senior leadership like Seton Hall has, and you can shoot free throws as well as they do, and you play half-court defense, that gives you a great opportunity to come back. And they have not missed a free throw here yet today. Well, they go to that pressure against Duke, and they quickly call it off as Snyder brings it up. It's 34-25, time remaining in the first half. The crowd senses that there's still a long way to go. And the big man comes up, and he's fouled by Walker, and that is three on Walker against Ferry. Battle of attrition here with fouls. You know, you mentioned Walker in the, in the great free throw shooting. As a freshman, he made 31 straight. He broke that record this year by hitting 32 straight. So an excellent free throw shooter, but now he's going to sit, and that's really going to hurt P.J. because 
not only has he been doing his job on the offensive end, he's a very gifted, low post defensive player. on the inside. They'll use Katsikas left-handed. He buries it. The three-point shot. Now it'll be a timeout, Duke. Nobody guarding the man taking the ball out of bounds. And they get it back into Ferry's hand. Dangerous strategy, but should work with Abdelnabi having about six, eight inches over Green. Here's, oh. the, here's the man I think has to do some scoring, it's Henderson. He's only one of four so far this afternoon. They'll try somebody else on Ferry. Abdelnabi is down on the inside, and Gaze comes over to help out that time. The Ferry's trying to do too much offensively. He's a great player who plays best when he just accepts the role. Deflected again. It is brutal down on the inside. To try and score an easy field goal against Seton Hall. They do believe they had beaten the best defense in the Big East last week. They were in for a huge surprise, and they're getting it right now. Well, you know, two of the great defensive teachers in the game are Bobby Knight from Indiana and, of course, Jerry Tarkanian from UNLV. And this Seton Hall club just took both of those teams right out of their offense. There's my man Henderson. Let's see if he does it. Stay down, and Ramos off with the rebound, and here comes Green. Good Green looking door. days. He's there. Gaze gives a big smile to Green. Now Duke has missed its last eight shots. See, it's, it's a, a three-point game. It goes back over to Seton Hall. They could tie it this time with a three-point play. And Danny Ferry looks up at that scoreboard. Mike Krzyzewski looks down at that bench at Bricky, but Bricky can't go. He's in trouble. In the Ramos. He'll stay with it and lost the handle. He normally has terrific hands, very soft, lost it, and Snyder will bring it down.
Ferry. Ferry. 21 points with Ricky watching. Suffered an injury on a spectacular collision in the early moments of the game. We'll get a chance to show you that again in the second half. Kicked away. Good skip pass by Seton Hall with Katsikas out on one wing and Gaze on the other. Very difficult to pack yourself back in defensively because both fellas that can shoot that three-pointer. Kubek returning. Duke with only three field goals against this Seton Hall defense in the last seven and a half minutes. Green, one of the trio of the New York seniors who played Riverside Church. Gaze coming up. And Snyder off with the long rebound. Another thing that's uh, good about Seton Hall, a well-coached club, they get back on defense from offense. Very difficult to get an easy break. Duke goes to a little four corners. Going to take the last shot here. They're going to have what do you got about a six second differential, so they do have to give up the ball. And I think a wise play by Seton Hall not to go out and make a foolish play defensively. Down to 10 seconds. They got to get moving. Quinn Snyder doesn't realize it. He was looking at the game clock. Henderson with a miss. Ramos has got it. They've got five seconds. Quickly into the hands of Green. Gaze will bring it from outside. Duke led it by 18. And they were feeling very confident. But P.J. Carlissimo, Seton Hall Pirates, hustled back in. And our coverage of this NCAA basketball championship will continue after this message. And a word from your local state. Thank you.